Hello, Acron fans! Welcome to this exhibition match between Cron Aberrant and Chiton on Cold Forge, which is a brand new map by Cron Aberrant that he released about a week ago. And I'm Shadow 53 your host. So, Cron Aberrant is starting out, he's in the bottom right corner playing Grekum. Chiton is in the top left corner, he is also playing Grekum, so this is a Grekum mirror match. This is usually a match determined, well, by lots of things, like most matches, but in particular by clever use of tribe placement and often has clever use of chronoporting, Grekum being the proverbial masses of chronoporting, being able to chronoport from any point in the map, very important skill to have. Used to be that Seppi Ligos would decide the match, but nowadays it's not really so much the case. Now Granians are actually quite often used, so I expect to see Octopods fairly commonly and a lot of base class units running around. But we'll see what both players go for. Chitin is definitely known for going for Octopods very frequently. Crown Aberrant, I'm not entirely sure what he's planning on going for though, so that's going to be a bit of a wild card in this game. Now, as for the map, like I said, it's a very new map, and it's also quite different from most maps. If you'll notice, there are only three resource crates that are readily accessible. Five if you count these two over here, but that's small. That's extremely small. For most Akron maps, you'd see a line of 5LC and 2 or 3 QP in the main base, with another set of resources pretty close by. In this map, no, it's 3LC and 2 QP, which is actually really in interesting. We've been talking about resources and expansion a lot recently. And it's nice to see Crown Iron actually playing with this. I was thinking to play with it myself, but I never really got around to it. Because in previous versions of Akron, this wasn't really viable. The base would just not last very long. It would last like, maybe three minutes. But now, even if it was fully saturated on all sides, it would end up lasting about, I think, five and a half minutes or so, I worked out. Which means, really, it's pretty viable for starting up and getting yourself going, even with this only these many crates, only two or three crates, that are allowed to be used on all sides. Which is a very different paradigm, but also means that there's a lot more... There's a lot more emphasis on well, expanding to get resources, but there isn't as much emphasis on depleting all, all the resources from your main base and getting so many resources that you simply can just expand for free. Like, expansion's still important, but you don't have that expanding for free and your main base basically gives you enough resources to keep going throughout the entire game. So. I'll be very interested to see how economic pressure s deals with it. I mean, it, it's going to be very different. This is going to be a very different match, a very different map from most maps Akron has. And honestly, I think it's a better way of going because it will mean, if it works out, there isn't too many issues with not being able to have enough resources, period. It should be able to allow for players to have, well, more potential to be harassed and allow for more dynamic games. But we'll see how it turns out. Anyway, this is just one game being played in it, and it's the first game being played in the map. And Chitin actually doing a lot of expansion towards the northwest map. This area is completely inaccessible to vehicles, only to infantry and base class units. North side as well, so he's expanding a lot to resources that can't easily be accessed. While Crown Aberrant is focused more on saturating his main base and getting rid of the neutral commands or neutral comm center that was guarding this large cache of resources. Now I should probably point out this map as should be pretty obvious by the fact that there's vision radii around all of these buildings, has a lot of neutral buildings. All of these buildings are friendly except for the domes which are actively hostile to all players. And and like I said, all players. Like neutral, hostile, basically dome creeps in a sense. It's another thing that Crown Aberrant was experimenting with quite a bit. So because there is vision being shared for all players, it does mean that... Oh, that's bizarre. Anyway, because their vision is being shared for all players, it means that there's actually a lot of... Yeah, that was bizarre. It means that the players are aware if the opponent is going for this expansion. So Chitin is aware that Crown Aberrant is at least thinking of going for that expansion. He, he doesn't know whether or not Crown Aberrant is actually going for the expansion, but he knows that the comm center has been destroyed, so if he wants to actually see what's going on there, he'd have to go there himself. And he can suspect that Cron Aberrant is going for it. You can suspect that all day. Cron Aberrant is not actually going for it directly. His Octo is actually going along. It looks like it's just moving along normally. It's not actually going for any any scouting issues. But the Spire, however, is being destroyed. So Kaiden is signaling he might be going for this expansion over here, the 3LC and 2QP in the center of the map. But Cron Aberrant will be able to see that his Octo is coming right up to it. He will be able to see if Kaiden is actually going for it or not. 
while Crown Avern himself, by the way, Chitin has gone advanced structures at this point in time, or is, yeah, he has gone at the 414 mark, while Crown Avern's, by the way, his main base is a little bit over half saturated. It's going to be about seven or eight minutes before it's fully set, or fully used up, I should say. Which is good to note, because like I said, this in version 1.2, the the size of resource crates was increased, and the speed at which RP's harvest resources was decreased, which means that fewer boxes actually last longer, which is something I was wanting for a while, because it means that you don't have to have massive lines of resources in order to have sufficient resources. And like I said, the domes, like I said, are neutral hostile. So, Chitin running his Faro into the domes, not a good idea. They are protecting two teleporters and a chronoporter, which is extremely valuable, and of course that's why it's protected by domes, but... If you are able to go through there and destroy the domes, then those teleports and chronoporters are free to use for anyone. Which, on a map like this, which isn't super, super large, it's large enough that the teleporters will be able to... Well, won't be able to get from one teleporter to another, but they will be able to get to either teleporter position to either main base, if I'm not mistaken. I haven't... I have to double check that, but from the looks of it, we'll be able to. Anyway, Chitin has lost his Faro to one of the neutral domes, and Cronhammer, having chased the Faro away, moves his own Faro back in order to avoid getting it killed by the dome. So he successfully, basically successfully pushed Chitin into that. While Chitin is getting out Sepipods, he is getting out some Aryans. Sepipod he has also three Reeves in his main base, so he's going to have a nice little bubble wrap going on. And he is 30 seconds down from Crown Amaranth, so we see from Crown Amaranth's point of view, Chitin's Sepipod has come in, destroyed the Octo, and now Crown Amaranth has a, three Faros coming into this expansion area in the west side of the map. Mind you, he hasn't actually gone for any expansions on the east side of the map, and getting two Octopods as well, starting to get his army built up, three Octopods, sorry, getting his army built up, Faros and Octopods. While Chitin is focused a bit more on Sepipods, I'm not sure if he's expecting for Crown Amaranth to go for Faropods or what, though... That being said, I mean, Chitin now is air dominance. I mean, he doesn't have a lot of Arianus to use it with, but he does get some Faropods. Even if he has, if he has a couple of Faropods and a couple more Sepipods, he should be able to have a decent amount of dominance in the air. At this point, though, Crown Amaranth may not be able to actually deal with it. I, I mean, he has enough of a ground army that he should be able to just push through it at this point without having to worry about Faropods yet. But once Faropods come out, I mean. Once we get two or three far pods and four or five sepi pods, then it's going to be a bit of a concern, and Crown Armor's going to have to worry a bit more about dedicated anti-air, either sepi pods or sepis. And he is getting advanced structures of his own, so he will be able to get air units quite soon. And they are there is a fight going on. Faros against sepi pod, and the Faros, of course, are winning. Sepi pods are not anti-ground units, and Faros are generalist units. So I'm not surprised sepi pod managed to win, but his sepi pod did escape. So Chitin managing to recover the sepi pod, heal it up, and send it back into the field. And we'll find two Octopods. The Octopods are anti-ground units. They are putting up a pretty good fight against the Semipods, though, but the Semipods are managing to take care of at least one of the Octopods. Another Octopod reinforcement coming in, while Seppi is coming around back to help get rid of the Octos, but fortunately, the Seppis aren't great against the Octos. They are anti-air units, then they just missed the Semipod, just ran away with the Semipod, coming back. Not as well healed as Chitin would probably like, but Chitin is about two minutes down from here, and his Semipods, they are being sent... Well, looks like he's not really changing too much about how his Sippy was being sent yet. But he is jumping back here and double checking his tactics. He has, however, still lost Sippy Pod. He did kill an Octopod in the process, but that's not worth it. Sippy Pods are much more expensive. Well, they're about 30 LC, 30 can be more expensive than Octopods, so they are not worth it. Octopods 70, 44, and Sippy Pods, sorry, they're 42 QP and 14, sorry, 42 LC and 14 QP more expensive than Octopods. So it's not worth the trade. I can tell you that much, that is definitely not a good trade on Chitin's side. But Chitin definitely trying to get, make the most of what he has right now. Chronomarin definitely pushing a lot more on the macro side, getting a lot of Faros and Seppies. And his Octopus as well. He's I mean, Chitin definitely pushing more towards Aryanids, which I think on a map like this, of this size, and with the amount of resources that you can get easily, it's probably not a good idea. Mind you, Chronomarin could actually go quite well for Aryanids, but Chitin does not have a good ground unit base to work off of. Which does mean that Crown Amaranth is going to have an advantage at this point until Chitin manages to either get up a really large Faropod army or just goes for ground himself. There really isn't a whole lot that Chitin can do right now other than those two options because Sepipods, while great against air, do not do especially well against ground units. At least for cost. They are not bad against ground units for the fact that they're dedicated air, or they're meant to be anti-air units, but still, they aren't 
a great option in this case. So Crown Hammer doing a great job getting map control, taking care of the expansion that Kitan was trying to go for, and neither player has actually tried to go for the teleporters yet, interestingly. Not entirely surprising since the domes are quite powerful and there's not really a whole lot of reason to waste the units that. And here's our first Fire Pod from Kitan at the 8 minute mark coming in. By the way, this is from Kitan's point of view. So Kitan just jumping back, looks like he is... He was... No, he's still going at the Fire Pod. I wasn't sure if he was going to use that for scouting, just to see if he needed to go out. And yes, he should go out. Sending his Fire Pod out, he is going to be able to deal a fair amount of damage, but... Not a whole lot. The Faros able to detect it. Crown Hammer did make a very good decision in making those far sorry, it's making those Faros to detect any Faropods that would be coming in. So Crown Hammer at the 924 mark. Neither player going for Chronoporting, mind you. Both players just still going for basic tech. Crown Hammer will pretty soon have the money to go for Chronoporting if he wants to. And I think he might be. He's not building any units and he's just getting resources. Here we are, yep. There it is. The Chronoporting tech at the 952 mark. And Crown Hammer just jumping back a bit behind that. I'm not sure he's double checking what's going on with the fight with Kitan. Kitan, the fight in his end is not going well at the 848 mark. He has two octopods and a Farpod in his base, ready to help defend, but really, he is in a bad spot right now. The Faros nullify the Farpod's big advantage of cloaking, and the Seppi's, of course, a great anti-air. However, the Farpod, oh, the Farpod's doing a nice job coming in from the side. It's catching Cronimer's units out of position, and Cronimer losing one of the Faros, or will be losing one of the Faros. Kitan's still just double checking this attack, and looks like he's trying to do it as best as he can. But he got he gets rid of two of the fires before even getting well, one of the fires before getting hit. Two of the fires go down ultimately, but unfortunately it's not enough. These octopus really need to come in. These octopus need to come in and help out with the battle. They're doing very little where they are right now. They need to come in. I'm not sure what Kitan is planning on doing right now. He doesn't have a lot of chrono energy though. He has no orders worth of it. And he's using what order he has to build yet another Octopod. Not a bad idea. Crown Hammer may be overextending at this point. Actually, I think Crown Hammer is overextending at this point. Titan is building a good, a large enough force. Actually, the force he has right now is definitely large enough, or was. The second Octopod coming from Crown Hammer changes that. But still, three Octopods against two Octopods, two Seppies, and a Faro should be a win for the three Octopods, if not pretty even. So Titan is in a position of actually being able to, well, punish Crown Hammer for overextending, because Crown Hammer is overextending. He doesn't have enough units to actually deal with the rest of the army that's here yet, but he is going to be getting Chronoporting soon, which will allow him to take care of what's left. But it looks like... Oh, Crown Hammer is pushing himself... Yeah, he's pushing a bit too far, losing one of the Seppies for free, and two Seppi pods coming in as well for Kitan. So Crown Hammer's main hope right now is to just make sure... And Chronoport! There we go! Get that Chronoport going at the Faros. Well, one of the Faros, a bit surprising. I'm not sure what happened there. That's... Oh, I see. There we go. There's the... Faro and Octopod, because still only chronoporting two of his units. That doesn't make a whole lot of sense. He had... Let's just double check here. At, yeah, 195 QP. I... That's bizarre. Yeah, see, just the Octopod and Faro chronoport back. But that's... I'm surprised he didn't chronoport back both Octopods, because if he chronoported back both Octopods, he'd probably be able to take care of the battle a bit more effectively. Anyway, Kitan just double-checking to see what's going on. He notices that there's a chronoport going. And he... Like I said... Okay, now at this point, with the units that Crown Hammer has at this point in time for the next two minutes or so before the next before they chronoport back, should be too much, but it looks like Kitan... Oh, Kitan has surrendered, believing himself to not be in a position to win, and honestly, I'm... Yeah, I kind of see that. He doesn't have chronoporting, and Crown Hammer has basically managed to chronoport back and getting himself an expansion as well. So yeah, there's... That was an interesting game. I That was somewhat... Like I said... Kitan could have punished the overextension there, but honestly, it would have been hard to call out that it was overextension. That, I mean, yes, the units were coming in, and he did have a chance before they chronoported back and before any of that happened, but it was a very tight window. And, like, it's hard to say, but I think Kitan probably would have been able to punish the, the overextension before the chronoport got complete. On the other hand, the chronoport still would have gone through. It would have been a paradox after that point. And it would have been a bit tricky for Kitan to hold in. So, an interesting game on a map with much reduced economy compared to pretty much every other Akron map out there. I hope to see more games in this map and play games in this map myself because it looks very interesting. I think it probably is the way to go, but I really want to play a bit more on it because, like I said, I've... Maps we have now, I mean, they're interesting, but the amount of resources on them may be excessive. Or the amount of resource boxes on them may be excessive when you consider just how many resources are on the map now, how many resources are, there are per box, and how long it takes for them to be drained. Not that all boxes should be drained, but, I mean, look at the way it was set up now. Both players managed to get harassment in and deal a fair amount of damage. 
it's just worth considering. But anyway, hope you enjoyed that, everyone, and have a good night. <laughs>